The head is the foundation of your model and you need to get it correct or placing your eyes, nose, and mouth will be very difficult and possibly even look a bit weird to the viewer. But don't worry, I'm going to walk you through every step to make a professional looking head that will start your VTuber down the right path. And you're gonna be surprised how easy it is. First, we're gonna check out our model in Clip Studio Paint and make sure you have all the layers you need. For my head, I have five layers, the face skin, the outline, the outer shading for the face, some blush, and a black dot. This dot will be quite important for a future video when we get to rigging the neck, but since it will be used on the face, I included it here. Also, before we go into Live 2D, there's one final thing to do in Clip Studio Paint. This program is incredible and has these amazing 3D heads. I simply drag and drop one of these heads onto my model and then use these settings in the left-hand toolbar to adjust it until it matches my model's dimensions. Even if you don't get it perfect, try to get it as close to your model as possible. Once you have all your proportions, take a snapshot of the head turned to the side, up, down, and an upper corner and a lower corner. Save each of these snapshots in your PSD as reference layers in their own folder at the top of the document. They're going to be amazing guides for not only your head, but also your nose, eyes, mouth, and some other things later on. Now that we're in Live 2D, you can see in my parts menu that I have two sections open. My head reference folder with all my screenshots of the head at different angles, and a face folder with all my face parts from the PSD. The first parts we're going to look at will be the face and the face outline. Select the face outline and open the manual mesh edit mode. From here, pick the stroke tool and set it to three vertices, and then draw a line around the entire face. You can play with the mesh width and density settings as you want, but make sure the center line is right on the face outline and that the edges fully cover either side with some space to spare. Then it's just click and drag the stroke to match the entire shape. At the end, you can use the pen tool and the stroke tools to finish off the mesh. I add some extra dots down the center of the face just to avoid having large irregular lines cutting across the entire mesh. It helps it stay nice and clean when it moves. Then you can press autocomplete and save your art mesh. With the outline still selected, go into manual mesh edit again and using the lasso tool, select all of the points and do a control C to copy them. Close the mesh using the green check mark and then click on the face part. Open manual mesh edit on the face and quickly erase all the existing dots. Then use control V and paste in your mesh and click save. Your face outline and your face are now completely meshed. However, we want the outline to move with the face, so we have to glue them together. This isn't any sort of complicated glue like with arms and legs, so don't worry. Just select both the face outline and the face in the parts menu and go into manual mesh edit one final time. And using the lasso tool, select everything. Then click find. If you did it correct, everything will turn green and your two meshes are glued together. You can press the green check mark to save your work. Now when you move a dot, both layers will move perfectly together and in sync. It's time to make our first deformer. Select both the face outline and the face and click create warp deformer button here at the top of the screen. Name it something you'll remember. I called it face XY and click create. A red and green box should appear and this box is your deformer. It's what you'll use to warp your face and make it look like it's turning. In addition, we need a parameter to tell the deformer to move left and right. There's a bunch of pre-made parameters already, and while you could make your own, it's best to use angle X and angle Y for your head turns. Programs like VTube Studio and VBridger will instantly recognize these two parameters to be related to your head without any extra settings. So try to use those. So to start, we're going to focus on turning the head left and right. So we're only gonna use angle X for right now. Using the triple keyframe button, create three keyframes on the angle X parameter. This will represent our left turn, center, and right turn. Hold up a minute. Let's quickly jump over to our reference folder and find the side head image we saved earlier with our 3D model and turn it on. Using the opacity slider in the inspector menu, we can make it semi-transparent and it's going to be our perfect guide for while we do the next bit of work. Now go back and select your face XY deformer and then on the angle X parameter, right click the leftmost dot to select that keyframe. The red circle should move to it, so that's why you know you got it selected. From there, go to your inspector settings and increase the conversion divisions. I set mine to 20 by 20, but some computers might struggle if it's too high. The more dots you have, the smoother your mesh will move, but the harder your PC will have to work. Do what's best for your setup. 
Now go to your viewport and select the tools option using this box in the bottom corner. We're going to be making our face with the temporary path tool and spoiler, we're going to use it a lot in this video. To start, you'll want to click outside your deformer bounds at the top of the head, since this is the easiest part to fix manually later, and then place dots along your face outline until you finish with the last dot being outside the deformer bounds. Now, click and drag each dot to the 3D guide that you made. Don't worry if the center mesh gets messy, it's quite easy to fix manually, and it doesn't need to be completely perfect. Just close. But once you're done, you can use the brush tool to smooth out any remaining bumps or lumps in your face until everything is nice and smooth. With the turn complete, click on this hamburger and then click Reflect Motion. Be sure to reflect horizontally and click OK. Now you have your left and right turns completely done. Next, we want to be able to look up and down. For this, we're going to create three keyframes on angle Y and basically repeat the whole process. Right click on the leftmost keyframe to select it, open up our looking down reference, and then using temporary path, move the outline to match your guide. While this speed rig is playing, I wanted to take a moment to address something very important. Using reference to help you line up your head turns is very important, but you should only ever use references you made or a guide other people have made specifically as free to use guides. You should never use another model or image made by someone else. This would be copying their art and it is not okay. Once you finish your looking down model, right click on the rightmost keyframe on angle Y and you can start matching your outline to your up position. Again, use the temporary path and clean up the mesh using the brush at the end if you need to. Without much effort at all, our model can look right and left and up and down. However, we still want to be able to turn our heads in more than one direction at once. By using this link button, we can link together the angle X and angle Y parameters and see our head turn in any direction. Yay! Except you'll notice the corners aren't exactly looking the best. There's a function in Live2D called Synthesize Corners, but for the best results, you'll want to do this part manually, trust me. Simply click on the upper left keyframe, open up the matching ref image, and line your face up to the ref just like before. I told you we'd use the temporary path to a lot. <laughs> you can also use the hamburger and the reflect motion option once you finish one top corner, just to copy it over to the other top corner. So I will warn you, it might not reflect perfectly and there might be some small changes to make, but those will just be some small wobbly lines that are quick to clean up with the brush tool. Finally, rig the bottom corners using the same methods with your ref image and before long you're done! Your model can officially turn its head in every direction! Yay! It's finally time to look at the other parts that we made for the face. Let's start with the face outer shading. First, we need to mesh it. Since it's rather simple, we can use the automatic mesh generator, and after picking standard, you could just play with the settings. For mine, I used a spacing of 20 and a boundary of 10, though you can pick whatever numbers best work for you. You don't need millions of dots, but you need enough to make it move smoothly with the face outline. Then, we need to fix it from spilling out past our face like it is currently. To do this, we need to give it a clipping ID. Simply click on the drop down button here and scroll until you find the face. Now the outer shading will only show where it directly overlaps the face mesh. With your shading fully clipped, simply drag and drop it into your face XY deformer. This means it'll move the same way your face outline does and look, your work is mostly done. But depending on your face, there might be some small areas you wanna adjust. Simply add a deformer within the face XY group and call it the face outline XY or whatever works for you and add keyframes at the angle X and Y parameters. Now, as you move around the keyframes, make the small changes you need to keep everything looking smooth. You can see I only had to adjust a few small spots using the brush tool in the cheeks and the chin line. It really wasn't much. Now for the blush. I find it very difficult to perfect blush without the eyes, nose, and mouth, but we can at least start getting a rough placement for it on the face. Again, let's start by auto meshing it and then dragging and dropping it onto the face XY parameter. As you can see, it's going over the side of the face and we'll need to clip it to the face like we did with the face outline. In the clipping ID slot, find your face part and select it. 
Just a note, if you find that your blush is going over your face outline and don't like the look of that, simply drag and drop it to be beneath your face outline in your parts menu. This will tell Live2D to put the blush underneath the face outline. Now we can turn the head and see the blush move with it. It won't move perfectly, but we can fix that by creating a warp deformer for the blush and calling it Blush XY, just like we did with the shading. Again, make three keyframes on the X and Y parameters and adjust the blush to where you roughly think it should sit. I didn't spend too much time on this because I will have to fix it once I have my eyes and nose rigged, but at least it adds some shape and realism to your face. And with that, our face is done! It really didn't take too long, and by using the models in Clip Studio Paint as reference, it takes a lot of pain out of the guesswork of what a head should look like at weird angles. Again, if you have any issues, feel free to drop a comment below, or drop by one of my live streams and ask me any questions you might have. I'm live four times a week, and I love helping people get their models up and running. In the next tutorial, I'm going to cover eyes and all their many parts, but until then, happy rigging!